Now the uppermost layer of our atmosphere, called the ionosphere, is able to reflect certain types of radio waves, but it also absorbs very high energy radiation. So the high energy radiation that it's able to absorb include gamma rays, as well as X-rays, which as you remember have a slightly less energy than gamma rays, and certain wavelengths of ultraviolet light, which as you can recall, are quite similar to X-rays. So all of these are absorbed by the upper atmosphere and they wreak havoc with the free radicals and oxygen and nitrogen up there, but they don't affect us on the ground, which is handy. These types of electromagnetic waves have so much energy that they can be dangerous and damaging if we are exposed to them. The radio waves that are reflected from the atmosphere are not quite as damaging, but it turns out that this reflecting property of the atmosphere is useful for different reasons, which we'll learn about a little bit later. So I've mentioned gamma rays, x-rays and ultraviolet light. Are those the only types of electromagnetic radiation that are blocked by the atmosphere? Well, no, there are a few more types. In the stratosphere, ozone, a chemical made out of oxygen, absorbs most of the ultraviolet light that's still remaining, that hasn't been absorbed yet, right? A small amount of it still reaches the Earth, but it's far less than if it didn't go through the ozone. As it turns out, the carbon dioxide in the air, as well as the water vapor, which, as we know, is responsible for the formation of clouds, are able to absorb infrared light. So that means that infrared light uh, doesn't get to the ground quite as much as the remaining wavelength. So what's left? We've reflected some radio waves, we've absorbed infrared light, and we've absorbed the very high energy waves. It's ultraviolet, as well as X-rays and gamma rays. We don't actually have much light left, or much electromagnetic waves left by the time it reaches the ground. In fact, only visible light and radio waves can get all the way through the atmosphere without being blocked or absorbed. There are small amounts of the other types of waves that get through, but they aren't quite as large as the huge portion of visible light and radio waves. What chemical in the atmosphere absorbs ultraviolet light and why is it important? Can you remember this one? Well, our answer here is of course that ultraviolet light is absorbed by the ozone layer. So the chemical that absorbs ultraviolet light is called ozone. If you're a chemist, then you might know that it happens to have the chemical formula O3, which is a bit different to normal oxygen gas. Normal oxygen gas will have uh, O2 as its chemical formula. So we can see that they're similar, but in fact they behave very differently. The main difference between them is of course that ozone is much better at absorbing ultraviolet light. Now, why is this important? What would happen if we didn't have any ozone? The ultraviolet light wouldn't be blocked at all and it would just reach us sitting down here on Earth, which is not a good thing. Ultraviolet light has a lot of energy compared to visible light, for example, and so it can cause things like sunburn or skin cancer. So without the ozone layer, it'd be a lot more dangerous to go outside. And this is, of course, why we're so worried about the ozone layer in environmental science. It turns out that there's a man-made chemical called CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, you can probably learn more about them in chemistry, that is very, very good at getting rid of all the ozone and turning it back into regular molecular oxygen, which cannot absorb ultraviolet light. So in fact, as a result of these, there's a very large hole in the ozone layer over the north and south poles of the Earth. And at these locations, the amount of ultraviolet light that reaches the surface from the sun is far greater than in areas that are closer to the equator. 